Welcome to the BuildBlock ICF Installer Training Series. In this video, we'll help you understand how to correctly estimate the number of blocks, concrete, and rebar needed for a basic ICF structure. Before diving into estimation, first collect this information. The total length of ICF walls. The height of ICF walls. If walls have different heights, calculate these in sections the ICF form size that you will be using, the square footage of door and window openings, the rebar reinforcement schedule, rebar size, lap requirements, and the number of courses of rebar, and vertical rebar spacing. Once this information is collected, we can start plugging those numbers into some basic formulas. These formulas will help you determine the appropriate amount of ICFs and other materials you need for your project. We'll look at calculating the number of forms including the number of straight forms, 90 degree corners, 45 degree corners, and specialty blocks such as taper tops and brick ledge forms. Specialty blocks are typically calculated and replace standard forms. We will also estimate the required rebar and concrete. Keep these numbers handy as they'll be used to calculate other aspects of your project. Estimating ICFs. To get the number of courses required, divide the wall height by 16 inches, and then round up. To get the number of 90 degree corner forms required, multiply the number of 90 degree corners in the structure by the number of courses required in step 1. The same goes for any 45 degree corners. Multiply the number of 45 degree corners in the structure by the number of courses required in step 1. Square footage equals length times width in inches divided by 12. Keep this basic formula in mind when calculating square footage. When estimating wall height, remember that all build block ICFs are 16 inches tall. Use the following table to determine the total square footage of all forms. For all straight, brick ledge, and double taper top forms, the outside and inside square footage will be the same. Use this table to determine the square footage of all 90 degree corner forms. Use this table to determine the square footage of all 45 degree corner forms. Lastly, use this table to determine the square footage of all radius forms. The square footage of corner forms is different depending if it is an inside or an outside corner. An inside corner has less square footage versus an outside corner because the panel lengths are different. To determine whether a corner is an outside or inside corner, identify the long side of the block by adding the total length of the panel on one side of the block. If the longer side is on the outside of the wall, it is an outside corner. If the short side is on the outside of the wall, then it is an inside corner. To determine the square footage of window and door openings, multiply the width by the height in inches and divide by 144. Use 80% of this number to determine the amount you will use when estimating. This ensures you have enough material for any mistakes or changes. To determine the total square foot area of a wall being formed, Multiply the linear footage of the structure by the height of the structure. Then subtract 80% of all door and window openings. Lastly, subtract the total square footage of all 90 and 45 degree corner forms to be used. Divide the remaining square footage of the wall by 5.33 to determine the number of straight forms required. Round up and add a small number of forms for possible waste or mistakes. Estimating Concrete Volume Next, we'll estimate the amount of concrete needed. First, divide the total footage of wall to be formed, including corners, by 80 for 4-inch forms, 53 for 6-inch forms, 40 for 8-inch forms, 34 for 10-inch forms, and 27 for 12-inch forms. This will equal the total number of cubic yards of concrete required. 
there will be some waste when pouring and when priming the concrete pump. You don't want to be short on concrete, and we recommend adding an additional yard and a half to make up for waste and the pump. Estimating rebar. Lastly, we'll estimate the amount of rebar needed in a single story structure using 10 inch forms or less. In typical structures, the concrete rebar lap is 40 times the bar diameter. This can increase in high seismic zones or is required by site specific engineering. When estimating, it is important to choose the right grade and size of rebar. Rebar grade refers to the tensile strength of steel and is measured in thousands of pounds per square inch. For example, grade 60 rebar will have a tensile strength of 60,000 pounds per square inch. Most all rebar used these days is grade 60 rebar. Rebar size refers to the diameter of rebar and is measured in eighths of an inch. For example, number 5 rebar, a common size used in ICF construction, has a diameter of 5 eighths of an inch. Even though you will estimate the full height of vertical rebar needed, vertical rebar is typically cut one inch shorter than the wall height when installed. This allows smooth concrete screening and prevents any interference with the top plate. In multi-story construction, vertical rebar should be long enough to sufficiently extend into the wall of the next story. For horizontal rebar, take the linear feet of wall and divide it by 0.9 to account for overlaps. Then divide that total by 20 and round up. This will give you the total number of 20-foot rebar pieces needed per course. Simply take the length per course and multiply it by the number of courses that will have rebar. This number equals the length of horizontal rebar needed for the structure. For vertical rebar, divide the linear feet of wall by the vertical dowel spacing and then multiply it by the wall height. With these simple formulas, you'll be on the right track to estimating materials to make your ICF project successful and keep it on time and on budget. Review the BuildBlock Technical and Installation Manual on BuildBlock.com for more information. Thank you for watching this video in the BuildBlock ICF Installer Training Series. For more information and other videos in this series, please visit our website at BuildBlock.com training or our YouTube channel at YouTube.com buildblock.